Yo, what is going on, Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and if you didn't see yesterday's video, then I'll just give you a quick recap. We built a 12-team PPR mock draft from the 12th overall pick, and that is actually the finale of my first ever series here on this channel, 12-team PPR mock drafts. We did it from the first all the way to the 12th overall pick. Super happy that I have completed an entire series on this channel. So this series of Superflex mock drafts might be the next one that we complete. We'll see. But anyway, we are doing a 12-team PPR Superflex mock draft for today's video from the second overall position. If you want to see the roster that we will be building here, you can go see that right there. One quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, one tight end, one regular flex, one super flex, one defense, one kicker, and six bench spots. In case you don't know what super flex is, basically it's sort of like a two quarterback league, except it's a little different. You have regular rosters, but with an extra flex spot that you not only can put in running back receiver or tight end in, but you can also put in a quarterback in as well. It's not exactly like two quarterback because if you don't have two quarterbacks, for any week, you can always put in a running back, wide receiver, or tight end into that spot. But generally, you want to have a quarterback in your super flex spot because your quarterbacks should be scoring more points than most of your running backs, wide receivers, and or tight ends. So with that being said, let's go get right into this draft. I'm curious to see how we can build a solid super flex team from the second overall pick. All right. So Patrick Mahomes went first overall. A little surprising, but I'm not going to say that you shouldn't expect it in your super flex drafts because to be honest, it does happen quite often. Normally Christian McCaffrey will go, but Mahomes or Lamar going with the first overall pick is definitely not unheard of. But with that being said, I think Christian McCaffrey should have been the first overall pick. So of course, I will gladly take him right here. He's great. And even in super flex drafts, I do think that you still have to value running backs before any other position, just because running backs is really what will win you weeks because there is such a shortage at that position. But with that being said, it is now our pick, but let's do a quick recap of what happened since our first pick. So we had Lamargo followed by Saquon Barkley, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Devontae Adams, Zeke, Dak Prescott, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Kenyon Drake, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Tyreek Hill, Nick Chubb, Allen Robinson, Russell Wilson, and Austin Eckler. All right, so let's go look at the players who we have available at running back. Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, love both of them. Completely fine with either, but I'd rather have Miles Sanders. At wide receiver, we have Chris Godwin. Definitely the best one available. If we take a receiver, it will be him. And at tight end, we also have Travis Kelsey and Kittle, like both of them. And then at quarterback, we have Josh Allen and Matt Ryan. So to be honest, I'm fine with quite a few more quarterbacks. And I think that it's probably worth waiting another two rounds to draft one. Now, if Russell Wilson fell, I would have taken him, but I'm not going to take Josh Allen this early. So we're looking at Travis Kelsey, Miles Sanders, or Chris Godwin. I think that I'll probably take Miles Sanders or Josh Jacobs with our next pick. So I'm going to go with Godwin here because if I don't take him, I'm pretty sure that the next team will take him. But if I take Godwin, the chances of him taking Jacobs and Miles Sanders is definitely not that big. And even if he does, to be honest, I'm completely fine with Travis Kelsey. Like, if you want to take two running backs, it's fine. I'll take Travis Kelsey. So we're going to go with Chris Godwin here. Then after we take him, we see Aaron Jones and Travis Kelsey go questionable decision to take Aaron Jones ahead of Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs. 
but that's not my business. I'm just very thankful that he did not take Miles Sanders. I love Miles Sanders. He has a pretty high floor considering he has a pretty significant role in this offense, especially in the receiving game, and he has a huge ceiling considering when he gets 20 touches a game, he can absolutely go off, and there's no question about it. So let's do a, another quick recap since our last pick to get a feel of how the last two rounds have went. So after we took Miles Sanders, we saw Josh Allen go, followed by Kenny Galladay, Adam Thielen, Mike Evans, Kittle, CEH, Josh Jacobs, Matt Ryan, Wentz, Breeze, Gurley, OBJ, Juju, DJ Moore, Robert Woods, Mark Andrews, Tom Brady, Zach Ertz, Aaron Rodgers, and Amari Cooper. And it is our pick once again. Let's go take a quick look at our roster. We have Christian McCaffrey, Miles Sanders, Chris Godwin. So we could look for a tight end soon, but we absolutely do not have to whatsoever. And we should definitely look for a quarterback here because we can't go without a quarterback here, in my opinion. So we have Matt Stafford, Daniel Jones, Big Ben. No doubt in my mind, Stafford is the best pick here. And even though there are some receivers who I like available, I absolutely have to take Matt Stafford here because I can't go without a solid quarterback for my QB1. And I don't think Daniel Jones or Big Ben as my QB1 is that satisfying. So we'll go with Matt Stafford here. Then Chris Carson and Cortland Sutton both go. So now I'm looking at Big Ben and Daniel Jones here. Now I'm just going to look at running backs. So Leonard Fournette fell. He fell definitely a significant amount more than what normally happens, but I'm still not too high on him. Le'Veon Bell's there too. I like him as well. And Cooper Cup and Ridley don't get me wrong, I like them, but I can wait for McLaurin, Parker, Metcalf, some of those guys. Maybe not for my next pick. They, they'll probably be gone, but, so that was a bad example. But Boyd, Edelman, Michael Gallup, those guys should be there. So we're going to pass up on a receiver and just take the quarterback who we want, Big Ben. I know people are going to be concerned about how I took Stafford and Big Ben because they both have a chance of getting re-injured this season. But the thing is, most medical experts are saying that neither of them have that high of a chance of getting re-injured. These injuries aren't things that normally affect the quarterbacks the following season. Of course, anything can happen, but this is coming from the experts, and I trust them better than anyone else. So we're going to go with Big Ben. The Steelers and the Lions offense should definitely be a high volume, very fast paced offense. So I'm very glad to add Big Ben to the roster. So it's our pick once again. Let's go do another quick recap. After we took Big Ben, we saw Evan Ingram go, followed by Le'Veon, Melvin Gordon, Calvin Ridley, Fournette, Cam Newton, Cooper Cup, AJ Brown, Darren Waller, Keenan Allen, Tyler Lockett, Tannehill, Metcalf, Devontae Parker, David Montgomery, David Johnson, T.Y. Hilton, James Conner, McLaurin, and Shark. It's so unfortunate how this always happens. McLaurin and Shark, guys who I really like, go right before my draft pick. This kind of stuff always happens. It's very, very unfortunate. So looking at who is available, we have Mark Ingram, we have Kareem Hunt, we have Akers. I do like these guys, and it's tough because taking them now is a little bit of a reach, but... I can't wait until my eighth round pick to draft them because they'll be gone. So we might have to take one of them here. At wide receiver, we have Boyd, Edelman, Gallup, Jones. I like all of these guys. And it's the same thing that I said about the running backs. It is a little bit of a reach taking Gallup or Marvin Jones here, but I can't wait until my eighth round pick to draft them because they'll be taken. So now it's kind of up to us to decide, do we want to take two receivers or one receiver and one running back? I'm going to go with one receiver and one running back because I like these receivers and I'm fine with them as my wide receiver too. So I'm going to go with a running back here. Actually, hmm, it's really tough. I mean, I doubt that the guys who we like will be taken. I like Gallup here and I like Akers. I don't think it really matters who I take. 
I guess I'll just take Gallup. I mean, it doesn't really matter because I doubt Akers will be taken. If he gets taken, I'm going to be extremely upset. But luckily, that doesn't happen. Daniel Jones and Landry both get taken. So now, Akers is all for ourselves. I think Akers is a great option this season. I love this offense for fantasy. There are so many vacated targets, so Akers should be used in the pass game. And Gurley wasn't that great last season, but he had so many touchdowns. The same thing should happen with Akers. I'm very excited to have him on my team. And it's our pick once again. So let's go do another quick recap. We saw Jonathan Taylor go, followed by Boyd, Gardner Minshew, Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff, Edelman, Devin Singletary, Joe Burrow, AJ Green, Jimmy G, Stephon Diggs, Kareem Hunt, Deontay Johnson, Debo Samuel, Michael Pittman goes very, very early, Drew Locke, Hollywood Brown, Bridgewater, Will Fuller, and Jamison Crowder. So first thing I see, Marvin Jones is available. Love that right there. Super excited that he fell. At tight end, we do have Higby. It's a little early to take him though, so I don't think that I'll be taking him here. So like I said, Marvin Jones, love him. We'll definitely be taking him. And then at running back, we have Mark Ingram and we have Geis. So we'll have to decide if both of them are there with our next pick, which might not happen. But what I do know is that Marvin Jones won't be there with our next pick, and I want him more than anyone else available. So we're going to take him because if we don't, he is most likely going to be taken before our next pick, and I do not want that to happen. So then Gronk and Pittsburgh defense goes. Two pretty questionable calls right there. So now it's really up to us. Who do we want? Mark Ingram or Darius Geis. This is very, very tough. Let's look at our roster. So we have McCaffrey, Miles Sanders, and Cam Akers. Cam Akers is on the riskier side, so I say that we go with the safer player in Mark Ingram. He's going to get a pretty good workload. We know that to be a fact. Darius Geis, if he stays on the field, could be a league winner, but we don't know if he's going to stay on the field. And plus, there's probably like a 5% chance that he's there with my next pick. I'm not expecting it. It's probably not going to happen. But you never know. And that's the whole point. There's a chance that he's there with my next pick. So that just kind of adds to the purpose of taking Mark Ingram here. So we'll take him. And I hope that Geist is there with our next pick. But it's probably not going to happen. All right. So it's our pick once again. And after we took Mark Ingram... We saw Raheem Mostert go, followed by Brandon Cooks, DeAndre Swift, CeeDee Lamb, Ronald Jones, Deshaun Jackson, Christian Kirk, James White, Tariq Cohen, Emmanuel Sanders, Darius Slayton, Damian Williams, Darius Geis, John Brown, Robbie Anderson, J.K. Dobbins, Jerry Judy, Keyshawn Vaughn, Anthony Miller, and Matt Breda. It's crazy to see that J.K. Dobbins is going around after Mark Ingram. That is absurd. I like J.K. Dobbins. But if he's going to go around, around and a half after Mark Ingram, give me Mark Ingram all day, you know? So anyway, it's our pick once again, and there's not too many receivers who I like. I like Rieger and I like Nikhil Harry, but we can definitely wait until at least the next round. At running back, not anyone who I really, really love, except for Tevin Coleman. I really like him, but you know what? I think we'll use our next pick with Tevin Coleman. Now, his ADP might be a little lower than it should be right now. As we get further into the offseason, his ADP should rise, but I'm not going to start adjusting the ADP myself because I don't really know what the true ADP is, so we're just going to go with whatever they have here. So Tevin Coleman will draft with our next pick, but for now, we see Tyler Higby's available, and I love that. I want every bit of Tyler Higby I can get this offseason. So we'll take Tyler Higby. I think he's great. The Rams are going to run a lot of two tight end sets, and that should definitely benefit Tyler Higby. Then we saw Henry Ruggs and Carrion Johnson go. So it's our pick again. And like I mentioned before, love Tevin Coleman. I think he should be great. Even if Raheem Mostert doesn't get traded, Tevin Coleman could be a flex option some weeks. But if Raheem Mostert gets traded... Coleman is at least an RB2, so we'll take Tevin Coleman. 
I love to have him onto my roster. And we are on the clock once again. After we took Tevin Coleman, we saw Rieger go, followed by Sterling Shepard, Baltimore defense, McCole Hardman, San Francisco defense, Jordan Howard, Sony Michelle, Mike Williams, Tyrod Taylor, Justin Jefferson, Philip Lindsay, Sammy Watkins, Hunter Henry, Alshon Jeffrey, Hayden Hurst, Philip Rivers, Nikhil Harry, Kirk Cousins, Golden Tate, and Latavius Murray. So let's go take a look at the roster that we have so far. We see that we have one, two, three, four, five running backs and only three receivers. So I think it's time for us to take another receiver, most likely. I do like our receivers, but we should draft another receiver here. First thing I see is Brandon Ayuk is there. He fell a little bit, and I'm pretty happy with that. I think that he's a decent pick. He is kind of relying on Debo Samuel to not be healthy, but you know what could happen. So Brandon Ayuk is not a bad option. Hunter Renfro also is a decent option for sure. He's a much safer option. We might go with him, but then let's look at the other positions really quick. At running back, Duke Johnson, Madison, both solid options. And at tight end, no one who I like there. At quarterback, we have Darnold and Carr, who are both decent picks. I think I'll take a third quarterback here because I don't really see much value elsewhere. So it's between Darnold and Carr for me. You can really go either way here. But since the Raiders are clearly addressed the passing game in the offseason by drafting some receivers, I think that it's definitely worth it to take Carr here. So we'll take him. And then after we took Derek Carr with that pick, we see Preston Williams and Henderson go. So luckily, our man, Brandon Ayuk, did not go, and neither did Hunter Renfro. So I kind of want to take Ayuk here and then hope that Renfro is there with our next pick, but that probably won't happen. So I'm just going to go with the safe option, Hunter Renfro. I like our three other receivers, so there's no need to take Ayuk, who could absolutely pay off, but who could also kind of bust if he doesn't get a starting role or doesn't get a ton of targets and doesn't take over the Debo Samuel role. So I'm happy with our Hunter Renfro pick. Now it's our pick once again. We're getting close to the end of the draft. Since our last pick, we saw Antonio Brown go, followed by Hawkinson, Naheem Hines, Jared Cook, Brandon Ayuk, Nick Foles, Austin Hooper, Darnold, Alexander Madison, Noah Fant, Marlon Mack, Corey Davis, Duke Johnson, Pollard, Antonio Gibson, Zach Moss, Chase Edmonds, Haskins, Boston Scott, and Fitzmagic himself. So looking at our roster, we have one bench spot and a defense and a kicker left. I'm thinking that bench spot will either go to a tight end or a wide receiver. At the wide receiver position, there's no one who I really like here. So let's look at the tight ends. First thing I see, Jaseki, Goddard, both available. Love them. I think I'll go with Goddard because even though I think that Higby's upside is definitely top five, he also has a little bit of risk because we didn't really see him do that great before Gerald Everett went down. I think that Higby should be great this season, but I will admit he's a little risky. So I want to take the safer option in Dallas Goddard, who will do great no matter what. But if Zach Ertz goes down, Goddard is a top five tight end. So we'll take Dallas Goddard here and then look at defenses with our next pick. So we see Justin Jackson and Curtis Samuel go. Time to look at the defenses available. And New England and Buffalo defense is available. Very tough. You can go either way here, honestly. It's not a big deal either way. You could really go with either pick there. But just because New England has a worse offense than they've had in a while, I think they're going to run a slow offense and really rely on their defense more than they ever have. So we're going to go with New England. They've always been a good defense, and they're going to rely more on their defense than they ever have this season with either Cam Newton or Jarrett Stidham at the quarterback position. They're not going to be a great offense like they normally are. So I think that their defense will, first of all, not have that many times to get scored on just because their offense is going to be going very slowly, but also their defense is going to be playing out of their minds since their team success kind of relies on them. 
Then we see Buffalo defense go, followed by Kansas City defense, Brashad Perriman, Chicago defense, Denzel Mims, Justin Tucker, Rorwasser. I'm not sure if that's correct, but the new New England kicker is who I'm talking about. New Orleans defense, Philadelphia defense, Harrison Butker, Minnesota defense, Zerline, Lutz, LA Rams defense, Denver defense, Matt Gay, Young Hoku, Jake Elliott, Matt Prater, and Robbie Gould. Now it's our time to take a kicker. And I see Zane Gonzalez, and that's about it. Unless, did I already say Matt Gay? Did he already go? I think, yeah, he did. Okay, so I like Zane Gonzalez here. He is the guy who I think is the best here. He's a great kicker and on a very fast-paced offense. So it looks like Draft Wizards gave us an A. I don't really care about their grade, to be honest. I think they have a very weird grading system. I'm very flattered they gave us an A, but I prefer the grade that I give myself as opposed to the grade that they give me. So let's do a quick recap of our team here. Our starting roster is Stafford, CMC, Miles Sanders, Chris Godwin, Michael Gallup, Tyler Higby, Cam Akers, Big Ben, New England defense, and Zane Gonzalez. I think that's great. The only weakness is our flex. If Cam Akers busts, is a little weak, but then again, Mark Ingram, Marvin Jones could easily fill in, and I think they're great options. So there's not really many holes in this team. We don't have a ton of great receivers, but Godwin, Gallup, and Marvin Jones are all great options. We even have Derek Carr on our bench, so we have three pretty good quarterbacks. We have Hunter Renfro, we have Dallas Goddard, and then we have some upside with Tevin Coleman in case Raheem Mostert does in fact get traded. I think this is a phenomenal team. This is a borderline A-plus team. This just may be my favorite team that I have drafted on this channel so far. I'm going to give this an A and a half, so right in between an A and an A-plus. So this team would get like a 96 out of 100. I really, really like this team. A lot of times I think that Draft Wizard on Fantasy Pros, which I'll leave a link to in the description below if you'd like to check them out. A lot of times I think that they give me too good of a grade, but this time I think that they didn't give me the grade that I deserve. I think that I should get a 96 about. I'm really happy with this team. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you're still watching, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this team. Let me know what grade you would give it. Do you agree? Would you give it in between an A and an A plus, or would you give it better or worse? Let me know. If you enjoyed, please smash the like button because it helps me out a ton. It helps me get this video out to more people. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I do put out fantasy football content almost every single day, and I don't want you guys to miss out. I also have a Twitter account where I put out daily content as well. If you want to follow me there, that would be great. I promise that the follow will definitely be worth it. You will get your follow's worth. I can promise that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Peace.